So in this lesson, we're talking about auditing log files in, and all the essential reports. But one of the most obvious things you can do based on log file data is try to spot anomalies you know, within a certain time frame. For this, you would need log file data that goes back a couple of days or even better, a couple of months. You can see spikes in crawl behavior. You know, for example, Googlebot was crawling very aggressively for one or two specific days. You know, or, for instance, if you want to be found in China, but you know, it doesn't seem to be happening, and you then see in the log files that Baidu, for example, doesn't crawl your site at all, well, that would indicate that you eventually have a problem. You could obviously also break it down into just the bots that are actually accessing the website. You can get an idea what other types of crawlers are coming and processing data from your site. One of the up-to-date use cases would be, for example, Google's mobile-first indexing switch, where you, know, you can see if Googlebot smartphone overtook Googlebot desktop in terms of crawling volume. You can understand what the top crawl pages by Googlebot are and then you know, go and verify if they coincide with your domain's most important URLs. You can also break down the crawl requests and status codes by directory you know, to, for example, understand how well or not well the pages are crawled and you know, if it happens regularly or, say, with huge delays or you know, even not at all. Going deeper into the report, let's have a look at redirects, for example. Log files can help you figure out incorrect status codes. So you know, in terms of redirects, you would be particularly interested in looking for you know, 302s, 304, 307, 308, and then you know, changing them into 301s, except for geo-redirects. Watch out for redirect chains as well, you know, and try to figure out if there's something that you need to tackle on that end. Also, it's super important to understand crawl errors. You know, there are two different categories that you should especially look out for. The first one is, again, the 400 status code range, mainly 404s and 410s. The general approach for these is to see you know, if those 404s happen specifically for you know, one crawler rather than for another. So depending on what is happening, you can decide you know, what to do with it. It might only be happening for Bingbot, for example, or you know, for all the crawlers. If you want to recover those URLs, you know, bring them back and use the 200 status code instead. Or, you know, if they don't exist anymore, but you want to keep the inbound link equity, then we'd need to implement 301 redirects to just make sure that this actually doesn't happen anymore. If these 404s are never coming back, you might consider changing them to 410s instead. Because, you know, 410 says the URL is gone and will never ever come back. You're doing it on purpose, but not by accident, so that's the 410. Google will reduce the crawling and those pages will be removed from the index way faster as well. Other important issues can be found in the 500 error range, especially the 500 itself, but also the 503. These happen from time to time, so it is natural you know, enough to see them in the log file. It's more about the volume and the consistency, really. So if there is a specific crawler from one specific IP that causes you know, the same error over and over again, this is an issue that you really need to investigate. Generally, from an SEO perspective, that's something you can't do really yourself. And particularly for the 500s, it is usually an issue with you know, the server or your infrastructure in general. In such cases, it is probably necessary that you pass the problem along to your IT team. Another important thing is to identify the top but also the worst crawled URLs and their folders. The you know, highly crawled pages and folders can be used for additional internal linking again. So you add link hubs, for example. Low crawl areas need to be linked more prominently, maybe. It reflects what Googlebot spent their time on. It is wise to use URLs that are frequently crawled, you know, for example, to establish internal linking to, you know, for example, new content items to get them indexed rather sooner than later. Also, when you understand you know, what the worst crawl pages are, you could then you know, prioritize them and give them just more attention. Log files can help you um, to see if, for example, new URLs have been crawled at all. You know, if relevant URLs haven't been discovered or even crawled, your internal linking probably is too weak. You know, and those pages need really more additional internal links. You could also consider to use XML sitemaps, which we covered before, you know, for better and more prominent internal linking and improving discovery. The final big thing you can use log files for is to understand what type of crawl voice is actually happening. 
It is usually caused by URL parameters gone wild. If you do not have a proper URL parameter management, you know, sometimes parameters for tracking, you know, as an example, can often randomly be appended to each and every URL. So, you know, then Google will just crawl these at some point and you need to watch this very, very closely. It can also really cause duplicate content and loads of other issues, not just for crawling. Most of this waste is caused by bad parameters. It is highly recommended to set up parameter behavior tracking all the time and really you know, to watch constantly for new parameters as well as you know, significantly increased crawling for the parameters that you already know about.